Good morning. Thank you for joining us here for this morning's press conference. If you'll please welcome the Honorable Kenneth E. Mapp and Lieutenant Governor Osbert E. Potter. Good morning. Please be seated. Good morning to the people of the Virgin Islands. Uh, Lieutenant Governor Potter I, uh, and I are here this morning. We want to talk about the tragic events that occurred on the island nation of Dominica. Uh, yesterday, uh, midday, I had the opportunity to speak with the Prime Minister, Mr. Roosevelt Skerritt, at Dominica, and was I, I wanted to call and express the territory's condolences and concern for the condition of the damage and loss of life caused by Hurricane or Tropical Storm Erica. I listened to the Prime Minister carefully and I was heartened to hear the distress and the destruction that the waters from Tropical Storm Erica has plagued upon the people of Dominica. The government of Dominica at this point still does not have a full assessment of the lives lost on that island. Do not know the full extent of all the injuries and certainly have not been able to even begin to assess the value of property damage caused in, the ter in, the, in that territory. When I was coming into work yesterday morning, I stopped to take care of a bit of personal items and a young lady that I come in contact with on a regular basis at this particular store here in St. Thomas who generally takes care of the items when I go there was paying, playing very loudly on her phone what I would consider uh, religious music or really church funeral hymns and she seemed like she was crying and so I inquired how she was doing. And she said to me that, Governor, I lost two of my younger brothers in the devastation in Dominica. That brought home for me full circle the impact of the damages and of the lives lost. The Virgin Islands community has a tremendous number of people in St. Croix and St. Thomas and St. John that hail from Dominica, lived here decades, have their children born here, are a serious fabric, a serious part of the fabric of the Virgin Islands. A number of businesses had been contacting me over the weekend and the early parts of this week offering to help in the relief effort for Dominica. The Lieutenant Governor and I stand before you, the people of the Virgin Islands, this morning to pledge our full support to Prime Minister Skerritt and the people of Dominica. And to do that in more words than, in doing that more than saying the words of comfort, but really attempting to be very practical in the help that is needed. And so over the course of the next number of days and weeks, we will be coming to you through this office to ask you to provide support for the peoples of Dominica. First, the option of flying people out of Dominica and flying them to other nations and territories is not a practical option. To fly support into Dominica is practical. And the Prime Minister said to me, that the first series of items that are needed is water, non-perishable food commodities, personal hygiene packets, and clothing. That's water, food commodity, non-perishable food commodity, personal hygiene packets, and clothing. Those that wish to give monetary donations, which 100% of those donations will be wired to the government of Dominica, can do so 
through the Community Foundation of St. Thomas with a check written out to the Community Foundation of St. Thomas. And in the memo, I'm sorry, the v Community Foundation of the VI, I'm sorry, the Community Foundation of the Virgin Islands, CFVI, correct? Yes. The Community Foundation, I apologize for that. The Community Foundation of the VI, and in the memo section of the money order or the check, please inscribe the words Dominica Relief. Dominica Relief. Uh, you are, give whatever you can. If you got a $5 bill, a $10 bill, a hundred dollars, a million dollars. We would like to ask you to, through the Community Foundation of the VI, and we have people in this territory that can give a million dollars, to please uh, provide that donation to the Community Foundation of the Virgin Islands, marked Dominica Relief, and the Community Foundation has advised me that 100% of the money donated for Dominica Relief will in fact uh, be donate, would be transferred to the government. They will not keep any of the money for administrative cost or assistance. No, no, I won't say that because, yeah, yeah. I would like to acknowledge the Wasen Dominique, the Dominica Association, and other civic organizations contributing time and energy to the relief effort, including UVI, Dominica Student Association, and the corresponding entities on St. Croix. Collectively, they have formed a group called uh, on St. Thomas, the Dominica Disaster Relief Committee. On St. Croix, the St. Croix Rescue, the St. Croix Bikers Club, Dominican Civic Groups, Tropical Shipping, Jonathan Cohen and his businesses, Holland Redfield, and David Jones, with a uh, representative from Government House, Mr. Shelley Moorhead, are all working to uh, coordinate where your relief supplies may be delivered uh, and uh, how they can get to the people of, the Dominique, of Dominica. Can I ask, can I make a personal appeal? I was involved in a relief effort for Haiti, uh, assisting, I'm not a member of, but assisting the Rotary Group in St. Croix for collecting food items following the earthquake. We need your help and we're asking for clothing and personal hygiene items. Ladies and gentlemen, the clothing that you know are not wearable, or the shoes that you know are really no longer any good, please do not pack them up and deliver them for transference uh, to the disaster area. When we worked with the earthquake uh, relief effort on Haiti, we spent an inordinate amount of time taking out what could only be described as garbage to throw it away so that it did not, we did not waste the time on the ship uh, taking up space, transferring stuff that people decided they didn't want in their house and that was simply a way to get rid of it. This is very, very, very serious. We're asking you to give, we're asking you to be generous, but if you don't have it to give, don't take up something that no one could use and give it to them. It makes very little sense for us to send relief supplies to a country, of send clothing to a country that someone takes out of a box and it is worse than the condition, than the clothes they have been wearing for the last 10 days. Give, but give what if you were in a disaster and someone was giving to you that you wanted to uh, get some relief and help, look at that item and say, I, I would wear this in a disaster. It isn't about they are in a disaster and they should take what they get. No, if you're going to give, give from your heart. And if you don't have it to give, say a prayer. But do not pack uh, items that are no good, a complete waste of time. Because we had to go through that at the Rotary to pick stuff out of boxes. And, and then it became, there were large uh, trash bags of trash that then we had to take from the Rotary offices to the dumpsters because there were nothing that anyone could use. This is not to trample upon the generosity of the people of the territory, but we're just asking you to give what makes sense to give. If you don't have it, say a prayer for the good folks of uh, Dominica and to be, able to, uh, to be able to help them. I'm going to ask uh, 
acknowledge Ms. Lorene Banis Roberts, the, uh, she's a Dominican government liaison officer, and I'd like her to come and address the um, audience, and then we're gonna have uh, Sam Top and probably Kimberly Jones come to talk to you about where the particular drop-off points are for the various commodities. Um, I'm gonna have Ms. Uh, Banis Roberts uh, speak, and, uh, and after she speaks, I'm going to ask the Lieutenant Governor to make some remarks, and then the Lieutenant Governor will call upon Sam Top and uh, Kimberly Jones uh, to be able to talk about some of the relief locations, and then I will come uh, back before you. Uh, Ms. Banas Roberts, please. Thank you very much. Honorable Kenneth Mapp, Governor of the United States Virgin Islands, Honorable Osbert Porter, Lieutenant Governor, members of the administration, distinguished guests, I would also like to recognize Mr. Paul Alexander, who is a committee member and also president of Wasin Dominic, the listening public, Dominicans at home who are listening at home and abroad, members of the media, good morning. I thank the Honorable Kenneth Mapp, Governor of the United States Virgin Islands, and his administrative team for the invitation extended to the Dominica Disaster Relief Committee to meet yesterday, Tuesday, September 1st, 2015. Our meeting was productive and successful. We are here today at this press conference because based on credible information presented at that meeting, Governor Kenneth Mapp has decided to give, to give this disastrous situation in Dominica the highest level of attention that it deserves. Governor Mapp, I thank you most sincerely on behalf of the government and people of the Commonwealth of Dominica. The passage of Tropical Storm Erica in the Commonwealth of Dominica on August 27, 2015, has caused tremendous loss of life and extensive damage across our islands after floods swamped villages, wiped out roads and bridges, completely destroyed many homes, leaving hundreds of citizens homeless, and left some communities unrecognizable. 20 of our citizens have been confirmed dead, with many, many more persons missing. While the devastation is island-wide, the following areas have been declared as special disaster areas. Baffa State, specifically the Paradise Valley, Dubic, Petit Savan, Campbell, Kulibistri, Pichle, Petit Soufre, Good Hope, and San Sauvé. The Commonwealth of Dominica is now in dire need of assistance to help rebound from the effects of this devastation, which is of epic proportion. We have established here in the United States Virgin Islands the Dominica Disaster Relief Committee to coordinate relief efforts to Dominica. We thank individuals and organizations who have already decided to make a contribution towards Dominica's recovery. The United States Virgin Islands has been welcoming and supportive to hundreds of Dominicans for many decades. And in this great time of need, we welcome all the efforts that is being made here in the United States Virgin Islands to bring relief to the people of the Commonwealth of Dominica. Today, however, we are delighted that Governor Kenneth Mapp and his administration has decided to support the government and people of the Commonwealth of Dominica in a practical and tangible manner. Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt, 
the Prime Minister of the Commonwealth of Dominica, has asked me to convey his deepest thanks and appreciation on behalf of the government and people of the Commonwealth of Dominica to you, Honorable Kenneth Mapp, Governor of the United States Virgin Islands, to your administration, to the citizens, the corporate body and organizations of the United States Virgin Islands. Those of us who live here in the Virgin Islands say thank you as well and we will do our very best to work collaboratively with the government and local community to help Dominica rebound. May God bless the United States Virgin Islands and may he bless the Commonwealth of Dominica. I thank you for the courtesy of your attention. Good morning to everyone. This could quite as, quite as easily been us. I mean, it's every year we know the drill. Every year we know the potential of any of these islands in the chain being hit by a hurricane or a tropical storm. A couple of degrees shift overnight and this could have been us here in the territory being hit in a similar fashion as our brothers and sisters in Dominica have been hit. I'm saying we need at this point to take the lead that the governor has initiated here and give as much and as generously as you can give. I am urging, I'm pleading that let's do that. The hurricane season is not done. It's not done by a long shot, okay? Some people got up the morning after we made a decision and instituted a curfew and, oh, nothing happened, so why we are even having a curfew? And rather than saying thank you and, and be so thankful that nothing happened, people took the time to be upset that they got up in the morning and were in the middle of a curfew. I think Dominica would have welcomed a curfew and they would have been happy to be under a curfew watch for the entire day if need be compared to what the reality that they are facing is. So sometimes we just really have to be thankful and, and understand that just a slight shift and we could have been in the same exact situation. So I'm really asking you, everyone that, that's listening, everyone that's able, everyone that's capable, give generously, give as much as you can give, and let us help this island in, in our chain that have so much long ties with us in the Virgin Islands to help quickly recover and get back on its feet. Thank you so much. And I think uh, we'll get Sam Tap to come and share some of the distribution points and other information that you need to know right away. Thank you again. Governor, Lieutenant Governor Potter, uh, there have been already many uh, people who've come forward in this community who have uh, private citizens who have offered and intend to fund their own uh, efforts to uh, assist in the relief effort in Dominica. I had a heavy equipment operator who called to say, a man who owns the company, he wants to get his equipment down there, he wants to get himself down there, he's an engineer as well, and there's a lot of rebuilding that has to go on. And one of the advantages, uh, Governor, of having Ms. L Lorene Bannis Roberts here as a, an official representative of the Dominican government, uh, especially in this disaster relief effort, is that normally cargo going into a country uh, has uh, a, a bureaucracy to clear and fees to pay uh, to be able to get in there and offload and all of that. Well, that bureaucracy is being cut as a result of uh, Ms. Bannis Roberts having the authority of the government to certify that shipments from here, relief shipments from here, 
are bona fide relief shipments and they can go in and not be faced with any red tape or fees, uh, just as uh, the Community Foundation of the Virgin Islands is waiving its normal administrative or any other fees for donations that are made, cash donations for this effort. So a lot of people are coming forward. Have already a trailer, of, uh, I believe a 40-foot trailer, is just about full here on St. Thomas and will be shipped out uh, to Dominica on uh, Friday by way of St. Croix. And uh, to the extent that space remains on that trailer today, uh, more of the kinds of relief items that the governor just mentioned at the uh, top of this uh, news conference will be loaded on by the pallet and they will have from here, uh, sometime we expect, I guess, early next week, that 40-foot container, the first of many to come. Uh, the relief supplies are being, uh, are being assembled on St. Thomas at the, uh, the, the, the meeting hall of uh, the Wasin Dominique and the Dominican Association uh, and affiliated uh, organizations in Tutu behind the O. Henry Cleaners. There used to be, for those of you that remember, an old cash and carry, a, a, a former cash and carry uh, uh, warehouse there. That is where it is. It's uh, adjacent to Walgreens behind O. Henry Cleaners in Tutu Park, uh, I'm not in Tutu, in Tutu itself. That is the uh, collection point here on St. Thomas. And on St. Croix, the collection points are uh, the Plaza Extra East and Kmart West on St. Croix. So for any who have uh, clothing, water, food supplies, dry goods, and that means canned goods and uh, personal hygiene items and things that, <laughs> things that you need when we don't have power for a few hours here, or if you wake up in the morning, and uh, what you need to get yourself together to present to the world, that's exactly what they need on a 24-hour basis at this point in Dominica. Uh, thank you. Kimberly Jones is uh, the Director of Communications with uh, a few other details that uh, potential donors will, uh, will appreciate. Thank you very much. Uh, just to extend that list, we definitely need baby supplies, pampers, uh, personal hygiene. Think about toilet paper and, and other products that go along with that. It's very, very necessary. Uh, for those of you who do not have items, uh, I've already gotten three text messages while we're here this morning about how can I donate from the states, how can we donate. Uh, the Community Foundation of the Virgin Islands has opened their website. You can make a donation via their PayPal right on their website. You can go to cfvi.net. There is an icon there for you to use. And then also um, you can do credit card donations via their website also. Please, this is an ongoing effort. This is not something that is going to be, uh, have a solution today or tomorrow. And that's something that the governor has made clear. This is an ongoing effort that will be supported by all the people of the Virgin Islands. Let me have the uh, web address, thank you. If you're gonna, uh, again, you wanna uh, donate via web, it's uh, www.cfvi.net slash donate and uh, when you do that uh, in the memo areas of your donation please put Dominica relief the government of the Virgin Islands is not authorized to grant or give monetary contributions to the to, to any of the island nations and we are working I expect to reach the assistant secretary Esther Kahiana tomorrow uh, to speak with her through the Department of Interior on ensuring that our U.S. national government can also uh, join the effort. I have put a call in to speak with Governor Garcia Padilla in Puerto Rico to encourage and to work with the governor there to see what relief efforts could be had uh, in Puerto Rico for Dominica. I have spoken to the heads of six of the instrumentalities uh, who cannot, again, send direct monetary contributions but what our instrumentalities will uh, do and have agreed to do 
Uh, we will, on behalf of the people of the territory, the instrumentalities are going to get together and purchase a 40-foot container of water. We're trying to put a 20-foot container of Heater X meals. Those are meals that we uh, use in the Virgin Islands. Uh, they're not uh, the, the, the MREs. They're, they're actually, from what the commissioners tell me, they're a lot tastier, but they carry their own heating ele element with water that can go into disaster areas. And we are identifying on the mainland, working with uh, two or three of the main companies that supply comfort packs to hospitals, which will include uh, toothpaste, toothbrushes, soap, a uh, small wash rag and some uh, lotion and deodorant. Uh, we want to identify those and if we can to the extent that we do that today, we're gonna ask our instrumentalities to purchase a 20 foot trailer of those comfort pack kits as well. So we will be sending uh, water, uh, meals that, that, that are non-perishable, that can be distributed and comfort care packs uh, on behalf of the, of the territory. And we'll be coordinating that through uh, our office. I want to thank the heads of the six instrumentalities uh, for being willing and able to uh, make this contribution uh, and, these, and support the purchase of these items to be able to send uh, to the uh, people of Dominica and to the Commonwealth of Dominica. Uh, the, the media office and myself and Lieutenant Governor Potter will be coming to you from time to time over the next number of days as we uh, encourage you and ask you to be generous in your giving, give quality, give as much as you can, if you buy some canned food items if you can, buy personal hygiene items, buy a couple of packs of Pampers, a case of Pampers, uh, female hygiene products, some toilet paper, uh, and, and just send the case to, uh, to the relief sites. Uh, we will be calling a number of the large businesses and supermarkets uh, in the territory to ask them to make uh, donations as well. Uh, at this point, we would open for any uh, questions you may have uh, so we can uh, get back upstairs and, and get to work on the relief effort. Uh, Lee Call. Uh, Governor Mapp, um, I just wanted to add a point here about, uh, as I recall, many, many times in Dominica and also when we had wars and everything, our National Guard, Virgin Islands National Guard, actually had a kitchen type thing and also engineers. So I wanted to add that and ask whether you've been in contact with anyone and what would be the complications in there? Well, I don't have the authority to send the National Guard outside of the territory. In my conversations with the Assistant Secretary of Interior, the question is if, if there are DOD assets in the region, what help can they provide to the country and the Commonwealth of Dominica? That, that will be my request and I will wait for a response. I cannot uh, legally transfer uh, military assets, uh, although I am Commander in Chief, I cannot transfer military assets uh, outside of the territory. Of course, some say if I want to invade some place, but I have no invasion intentions. <laughs> Good morning, Governor. Good morning. Well, would it be possible for you to name the instrumentalities? The, Instrument well, the, the instrumentalities would be the VA Lottery, the Virgin Islands Water and Power Authority, the Port Authority, the West Indian Company, the Public Finance Authority, and Virgin Islands Next Generation Network. Being no more questions, I want to thank you all uh, for your assistance. Uh, uh, Senator uh, Sean Michael Malone has, is also helping us to coordinate with our uh, contacts at the U.S. Uh, level. And I, uh, Sean, we're looking for some uh, uh, solid connection uh, today so that we can get the U.S. government on board. I want to thank you all and, and, and wish and ask you to keep the people of Dominica in your prayers uh, for getting through this disaster and ask you to be practical in your support and your generosity in giving. Thank you and have a wonderful day.